Stay tuned for some quick and easy ways to learn cortical topography. Hello and welcome to this Sutton Brain Hub video covering basic cortical topography. In this video we are going to give you a few tips and tricks on how to recognise the major cortical landmarks. When looking at a superior view I would always advise trying to find the central sulcus, a deep sulcus that sits about two thirds of the way back on a real brain. That's because we have large frontal lobes. Everything anterior to it is indeed the anterior lobe, while everything posterior is the parietal lobe. It also helps us recognize two important strips of cortex. And the first one is involved in voluntary motor control. It's called the primary motor cortex, also known as the precentral gyrus. The other is involved with sensory information. It's called the primary sensory cortex, also known as the postcentral gyrus. A couple of important things worth knowing about these strips of cortex. First of all, the right hemisphere is involved with the left side of the body and vice versa. So we have pathways that cross somewhere along the line. Each strip of cortex also is a map of the human body in terms of the density of motor receptors for the motor cortex and the number of sensory receptors in terms of the sensory cortex. And this is represented upside down on the cortex. So it's upside down and the right serves the left and the left serves the right. Often referred to as an upside down half humunculus. Supporting each of the primary cortices is a larger, less well-defined area of cortex. This area in red that sits in the anterior lobe is involved in supporting the primary motor cortex. It's an area known as the association motor cortex and it's involved in the planning of movement before the primary motor cortex executes it. This particular area is called the pre-motor cortex and it's involved in visual cues that guide movement and therefore it has connections with the cerebellum. Sitting in the parietal lobe now coming in as a green colour is the association sensory cortex. Now the sensory association cortex is involved in integrating sensory information with the information that's being processed in real time by the primary sensory cortex. So this helps us to recognize maybe objects that we've handled before or helps us put into context by using previous experience with all incoming sensory information. So the key message here is that we have these very well defined primary cortical regions for both motor and sensory control on the superior surface and we have supporting them these areas known as association areas. What happens when we get damage? Well the pathology that is probably due to a lesion somewhere along the line is going to be different for each area that is damaged. So in terms of damage to the primary motor cortex, we would get hemiplegia or hemiparesis, that's paralysis or weakness to one side of the body. In terms of damage to the primary sensory cortex, we would have some form of anesthesia. If we get damage to the motor association cortex, we have something known as apraxia. This is the inability to perform purposeful movement even though there's nothing wrong with the neurons that are innovating the muscles. If we have a lesion located in the area of sensory association cortex we get something known as agnosia which means not to know. So as we now take a look at this medial surface we can see the area in green is called the paracentral lobule. This is effectively an overhanging segment of the primary motor cortex and the primary sensory cortex and is related to the lower limb. Moving into the anterior lobe or the frontal lobe we have another area of association motor cortex. This time it's called the supplementary motor cortex. It has strong connections to the basal ganglia and is involved in movement initiated from internal cues. It's responsible for initiating very basic motor programs like standing from the sitting position or walking and stopping. Any damage here will lead to something called akinesia or bradykinesia which is a poverty or slowness of movement. Right at the very front of the brain, the prefrontal cortex is often referred to as the seat of higher intellectual function. 
It's responsible for our personalities, working memories, morality, reasoning and problem solving. It has strong connections with this area in purple, which is a limbic area of cortex known as the cingulate gyrus. This is responsible for reward behaviours. It's also responsible for our drives and instincts and our pleasure centres. Any disconnection between the prefrontal cortex and the cingulate gyrus can lead to something called disinhibition, which is socially unacceptable behaviour. At the back of the brain, we have the occipital lobe, which receives information from the visual system coming from the lateral geniculate nucleus of the thalamus. This area in yellow represents the precuneus and it's responsible for episodic memory. It's very unusual for it to be damaged in isolation. Subscribe to Soton Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.